it's common to see vomiting and diarrhea. Some other signs of chronic enteropathy that I've seen, and you'll see in the literature, uh, stool frequency, both the number of times a dog goes and the volume, okay? A small dog going four or five times a day, you know, that, that's a lot of stool or large amounts of stool. Flatulence, uh, regurging, burping, air licking. We see dogs that'll stretch or they'll even sleep in kind of bizarre positions because they're crampy or painful. We have uh, berygamous, you know, intestinal noises. Some dogs are droolers. Dogs with pica, they eat sticks, stones, cloth, rugs. Picky eaters, weight loss and underweight. Dogs should be going to the dish, cleaning it up, and maintaining ideal body weight and body condition score. Why is it that owners are changing the diet, this diet, that diet, and the dog is picky, picky? These are signs of chronic enteropathy. This isn't a dog who wants mom to go shopping every other day at the pet food store. And typically, chronic enteropathy, we will see skin signs, uh, ear, otitis, anal glands, dogs that are coming back. Uh, for recurrent anal gland problems and general paritis that can also be associated with CE. And behavior, dogs that this pica, this putting everything in their mouth, you know, they're two, three years old, they're done with puppyhood. Why are they doing this? Foreign bodies, we actually started when we'd get a dog with a foreign body that was older, we would start biopsying these dogs and found that a significant amount of these dogs will have changes inflammatory bowel type changes. They're doing this foreign body almost in a way to try to like self-medicate with something. They can have obsessive compulsive behavior, anxiety. Um, they're hard to train dogs. And we'll talk more about this in some of my other lectures going forward, this whole behavior component 